Good evening, everybody. Let's see if my audio settings... Ah, they seem to be roughly where they are. Maybe a little quiet, but I also think the game is where it needs to be as well. So um, let me know if you need to turn up your audio and that. I'll try to accommodate as best as I can. And I know I'm on a late night tonight, but I had the most wonderful conversation with somebody. And I didn't want to let them go. And I hope they didn't want to go. Uh, but... I had to face two priorities, which is number one, to be able to talk with this wonderful person, to engage with him, and we were talking about this game, and I also needed to acknowledge that this is it. Um, this game is coming out tomorrow, and I'm excited for it. I will not be, I'm not going to give any kind of, oh, hey, you should get this, oh, hey, you shouldn't. Um, I don't think you can even make those determinations on a game on a first playthrough. Um, but what we are going to do is we are going to look at it for the very first time. And um, as I would expect from these types of games, uh, we will take our time and see if we can learn our way around. I have a suspicion that this is going to be an unmitigated disaster for my civilization, so maybe I don't want to play humanity. Um, but I know nothing about this game gameplay-wise. I have very specifically been avoiding watching people play this. And um, I... I'm always sort of 50-50 on following the devlogs or something like that because in one way um, it's very exciting to watch the development of this. It's very exciting to watch the sort of the, the, uh, the thought process that goes behind games like this. On the other hand, there's really something special about playing a game for the first time and, uh, and more importantly to play a game in this genre, grand strategy, and the first space grand strategy uh, to have gone from CK2, and I know I haven't streamed Europa Universalis 4, but I have spent plenty of time in it. Um, you know, it's fun. Let's see, let's see what it's like to go into this blind and see what we can, we can find. Um, I suppose first things first, um, the music. I've gotten used to good music in these kinds of games and this one doesn't disappoint. I hope it's clear enough for all of you. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of... I'll hold off. I'll, I'll take a minute before going into the game. It's an exciting time. It's the first time we're going to hit new game on this. Um, Yeah, sorry, I'm just appreciating that music. So, all right, uh, we've got Johan Andersen, Heinrich Foreas. I don't think I'm going to be able to pronounce pronounce these correctly. Here's everybody who's worked on it. I'm not giving them... Oh my god, there's quite a few. I think we're going to be here all night, so my apologies to everybody below 2D artists, but maybe, maybe after a run. I, you're all here for gameplay, so... Here we go. Um, already got a few of you in chat, so welcome. I hope hope you're all familiar faces. If you're new here, uh, I try not to get this giddy over things, but um, it's a new grand strategy game, and it's in space, and it has appropriate mood music. So, uh, one of the things we're going to do on this playthrough, where we're going to read everything, um, we're going to do our best to. To figure out what's going on <laughs> um, if it's anything like I'll, I'll say if it's anything like Crusader Kings 2 or Europa Universalis 4 uh, they are not easy to to start off in they're not easy to to you know they're not easy to to pick up um, but then the effort is worth it right and so 
I think the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to, one, I'll read, um, and then two, um, we're going to try and talk and, and figure our way out. Um, now, this is not to, this is not necessarily a slight on um, the Paradox games, because one other thing I will say is that having now played several of them, especially going back to something like Victoria 2, um, you, I think I have gained an appreciation for the complexity that was in their earlier games and how future installments have actually put quite a bit into simplifying the presentation and minimizing the amount of, of sort of fiddling that you need to do. So there is complexity, but not um, maybe not an undue amount of, uh, of um, micromanaging. So um, it'll be really interesting. I mean, I think this is the... Uh, I think Europa 4 is the most recent one that I've played. Um, maybe it's Crusader Kings 2. I feel like Europa 4 is the most recent one that's come out. I, I don't know the work that well. Um, but we have Stellaris, and of course we're going to look forward to Hearts of Iron 4 coming out uh, not too long from now. Uh, so it'll be kind of interesting to see how they have taken these experiences, and they've first of all added their own spin on space. Obviously this is partially what um, Civilization Beyond Earth is trying to do on a single planet, and Endless Space is doing at a larger scale. And so it'll be interesting to see the grand strategy treatment for, for this kind of work. But anyways, we begin with the United Nations of Earth. Uh, we have got an indirect democracy, so it holds an election every five years to elect a new ruler. Uh, it seems to give us uh, better rulers and a lower cost. The government is an indirect democracy where citizens can vote on officials who are elected to represent them. Uh, we have xenophile. Uh, so this is a population modifier. Uh, minus to xenophobia. There exists in all of us a deep-seated fascination for the unknown, an adventurous spirit that rejects the familiar and glories in the unfamiliar, whatever or whomever it may be. And it looks like this, I'm going to go from the color coding um, that this is a uh, possibly a negative one. So it would be a fanatic individualist, a population modifier, uh, energy credits uh, bonus, slavery tolerance minus 100%, ethics divergence uh, plus 10%. And we must recognize that society is but a convenient fiction, the byproduct of individuals working towards parallel overlapping and contradictory goals, as it should be. Uh, under human. So I think what this is, this is uh, going to be uh, sort of government bonuses. Uh, this is going to be species bonuses. And then um, I'm assuming that these are, I'm not entirely sure if these are racial or what, but we'll probably find out as we compare between these. So we've got uh, human, mammalian, and apparently the traits that defined humanity are uh, quick learners. So additional experience for leaders and nomadic, so migration time uh, minus 50% and resettlement cost minus 33%. So presumably we sort of go out into the, the universe and we colonize quickly. So the myriad human nations that constitute the interstellar government are, a disparate, yet uni uh, are disparate yet unified in purpose. These bipedal mammalians have developed a society that occurred, oh, each other has two levels, normal and fanatic. Orange is it negative, it just indicates fanatic. Ah, okay, so it's uh, a very deep, um, Deep feeling. I appreciate that, uh, GenSec17, and welcome. Uh, these bipedal mammalians have developed a society that encourages and even thrives on individual freedoms and cultural differences. As a result, humans tend to integrate well with alien populations. Despite this, they have a strong, uh, strong martial traditions produced by a millennia of intermittent warfare on their homeworld, and sometimes aggressive and unpredict. Their sometimes un aggressive and unpredictable nature should not be underestimated. Blah. Sorry. I. Uh, I like something. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of you in here now. Uh, for the people who are new, welcome. Uh, I am definitely, this is my very first time that I'm playing this, so uh, I apologize in advance. For some of you who are looking for like just the straight gameplay, uh, I am actually going to be going fairly deep into this because part of the fun that I think in this is uh, the process of learning a new game. And, uh, and so as a result, uh, this might be a little frustrating for some people as I overly read or I overanalyze things. So um, I definitely appreciate, so Gensex actually started off on a great foot here, which is to clarify something that's uh, unclear. Uh, I don't know, I mean, obviously I can't be Twitch plays Stellaris, that would kind of be boring for everybody. Um, but I definitely appreciate a little bit of guidance on things that are maybe not so obvious, because that was one of the things we were interested in, was to see how the, um, how the interface works and how... 
um, how they take this this very broad amount of information and puts you in. I mean, if I really wanted to go in deep, I'd probably do edit, but let's let's keep it let's keep it uh, simple the first time around. So uh, we've got nuclear missiles, space to space missiles equipped with a high yield nuclear warhead. Although based on old pre space technology, these crude fire and forget weapons can be surprisingly effective at weight range. Warp travel, the warp drive generates a subspace bubble around the ship, making faster than life speeds attainable. This allows for free but relatively slow travel between stars given the great distances involved. And finally, we've got mammalian ships, which don't seem to give us anything. So we now have the Commonwealth of Man. This is a military dictatorship. Uh, so uh, as we sort of guessed that there's uh, racial traits and then there are um, sort of uh, government traits. So we've got a military dictatorship, which holds an election upon ruler death to select a new ruler. Each real ruler can build an oversized ship, uh, greater naval capacity, uh, less ship upkeep. This government with, is a militaristic form of autocracy with the ruler serving as the undisputed head of the military, which is firmly in control of the state apparatus. Uh, they're xenophobic, so uh, increased xenophobia and uh, higher alien slave tolerance. The stakes could not be higher as we reach into the vast and charted expanses of the galaxy, for we are gambling with the very survival of our species. Never trust the alien, its false smile hides an unknowable mind. And uh, as we learned, it's not a negative trait, but in this case, it's a deeply held belief that we've got fanatic militarist, uh, plus 20% army damage, uh, plus 100 alliance influence cost, uh, 50% rivalry influence gain, uh, war happiness 10%. The ability to project, for project force is of paramount importance. The only way to preserve our way of life is to make sure that everyone shares it, willingly or not. So in some ways this is actually very appealing to me because it's very, um, it's appealing to have something which is uh, very indi individualistic. But I'm not so crazy about the idea of a very heavy influent, uh, emphasis on building ships and uh, and sort of maintaining fleets. And, and I, I try not to be too much of a warmonger. Uh, we've already identified the human traits. And then the UN-sponsored Ulysses Initiative oversaw the construction of six great arc ships in low Earth orbit at the end of the 21st century. The ships were fitted with powerful but unstable wormhole generators and sent, uh, sent towards distant stars carrying a quarter million colonists each. None were headed, uh, heard from again, and research into subspace wormholes was soon abandoned. Yet unbeknownst to Earth, one of the Ark ships made it into a lush alien moon and established a flourishing colony. The pioneers who tamed this world were determined to realize humanity's manifest destiny, dom uh, dominion over the galaxy at any cost. So this is actually a uh, faction I'll be really interested in playing in the future, but I'm not entirely sure this is the one that I want to do the first time around. So we got red laters, lasers, which are laser weapon fire focused on beams of light at targets, causing damage through the generation of intense heat. Uh, they have wormhole travel, so wormhole generators tunnel through subspace and establish a conduit between two points, permitting travel across vast distances. The large generators are too big to be fitted on ships, requiring special wormhole stations to operate. So it doesn't mention slowness, so I suspect here the idea is swift and terrible attacks to establish your, your dominance. Actually, we've got uh, one more military dictatorship. These guys look nasty. All right, so this is a collectivist military dictatorship. In this case, we've got the Zin Empire, uh, slavery tolerance and uh, less food consumption. Society has long since evolved past the insignificant rivalries and concerns of individuals. We are numerous but one, and the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. I think I've heard that somewhere. <laughs> and they've got a fanatic militarist. Uh, looks like it's the same, the same as before. Uh, the Zin are strong, so bonuses to damage and minerals. Uh, they are talented, so leader skill levels, but seems to come at the cost of non-adaptive. So in this case, red uh, is definitely a negative in this case. Uh, the species does not adapt well to foreign environments. Um, so less colonization, definitely more about projecting power into the world. Oh my goodness, Jesse Cole, thank you so much for that host. Uh, guys, I know Jessie Quill has to go to bed soon, but I will just take a minute here and give her a special shout out. Um, she's been tremendously supportive uh, throughout um, throughout my brief time on Twitch. She's a wonderful streamer. She is somebody who is an influencer of content creators, and I you know I always do this wrong. Manager of uh, influencers and content creators. She of course can put it much better than I do. Um, but she is really a wonderful human being, talks uh, very much in depth about um, both social issues while gaming. Uh, she's definitely somebody... Ah, she is here. Excellent. Guys, um, 
one of the great uh, treats on Twitch. I strongly recommend checking her out. Um, I am very privileged to call her such a great friend. Um, she's in fact one of the reasons why I am streaming so late, um, but definitely somebody uh, worth checking out if you want to if you want to learn more about people and if you want to see somebody who can just keep a really fun uh, community going while playing games, uh, I owe her uh, I owe her a tremendous debt of gratitude, uh, but I am forever going to be trying to to emulate. Uh, many of the great traits that she shows. So I know I usually give a longer intro, but I've got so much reading to do for all of these races. So I apologize, Jess. I'll have to give you a better intro next um, time. I would never want to belong. To Gensec, thank you so much for that follow. I really appreciate you uh, <laughs> hanging out because if you you obviously know this game, you're gonna have to hear so much stuff you already know. So I'll try and keep it. Uh, I'll try and keep it brief for you. But I really appreciate that show of support. So. Uh, the Zinnaval from carnivorous pack hunting lizards that prowled the dunes of Zinnia. Uh, they eventually developed a highly structured hierarchical society that emphasized order and martial prowess above all else. By the time the Zin entered the Industrial Age, a series of devastating global wars launched by a particularly ruthless warlord had already seen the establishment of a single world-spanning nation. From these humble beginnings, the illustrious and everlasting Zin Empire was born. Um, I would never hey, Jake Bandit. Any club oh, thank you very much for that follow. Um... Yeah, we're, uh, I don't know if you've been here from the start, but this is my very first encounter with Stellaris, and I promised everybody that I would read through everything, I would learn it on stream, I would screw it up so bad. Uh, so I hope you are in a forgiving mood, because this might be very tedious for people familiar with the game, but it's great to have you in here. I really appreciate it. Guys, um, I wasn't expecting this many people to be here tonight, and uh, the support you've shown me already is incredible. We haven't even got past the first screen, so I promise not to waste too much of your time. Pomp and Neko! Great to see you. We're just starting tonight, so you're going to get some content, and we're playing a new game. We're playing Stellaris, so there's going to be lots of reading, there's going to be lots of numbers, um, and I'm really excited to try this out. So, um, so yeah, um, just got here, been watching uh, Let's Play, but looking forward to my start. Awesome. Uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be a complete Charlie Foxtrot. Uh, I almost don't want to play a human species because I don't want to be responsible for the doom of our, our race. But the good news is that there's two human empires, so as long as one of them survives, uh, we should be good. Um, anyways, by the time the Zin entered the... Hey, Phantom Klepto, great to see you again. Um... Oh, uh, from these humble beginnings, the illustrious Everlasting Zen Empire was born. So we've got mass drivers. These electromagnetic projectile launchers use magnets to accelerate armor-piercing rounds towards targets at high speeds. I'm going to guess there's probably some sort of like rock, paper, scissors in terms of like energy weapons versus like ballistic and things like that that's going on. And we already did warp travel for the United Nations of Earth. So let's move on to the kingdom of Yondarim. Many people are doing pretty basic human starts. So it'd be better if you did custom or another one of... The, oh, so you mean other than humans? Okay, that's cool. Um, I, I mean, I, I already see a couple of, uh, of races that sort of seem uh, that seem interesting to me. So uh, yeah, we can definitely take a look into that. All right, so we've got the divine mandate. This government is a spiritualistic form of autocracy where the ruler is treated as a divine symbol. Organized religion is widely employed in support of the state apparatus. Well, you know, maybe some of these uh, good paradox developer people might take some of these mechanics and give us theocracy in uh, Crusader Kings 2. You know, not, try, not trying to sound ungrateful or anything like that, but, uh, you know, you can show, show CK a little love. <laughs> um, so each, real, rule, ah, each ruler can build a tomb monument built. Oh, that's neat. So as you go through generations of rulers, you kind of get these necropolises of, um, of, of the great deeds of the past. Um, so bonuses to slavery tolerance, uh, and minuses to resettlement costs. Oh, sorry, that's to the divine, uh, the divine mandate. Hello, the Green Pact. Great to have you in here. Um, we've got, uh, pacifists, so empire modifier, uh, bonus to maximum embassies, minus to rivalry influence gain, minus to army damage. Uh, bonus to population modifiers for foods and minuses on war happiness. Frantic Whisper. Great to see you again. Guys, this is another guy I need to shout out. He's been so good at, uh, at being here each night that I've been streaming as well. Um, I know he doesn't stream very often. But he's a wonderful guy. Works, uh, works in the game industry. Uh, an absolute gem to have in the, uh, in the Twitch Vancouver meetups. He is... I will... 
this might sound a little over over the top, but he really is a highlight. I I have always enjoyed Kai. Thank you so much for that host. Uh, you can suggest it absolutely, the green pack. This is going to be my very first try. However, I do also have another viewer who was a little uh, put off by the idea of another human start. So I, I'm kind of taking in the advice, um, and then once I get through all the starts, we'll see if we can, uh, we can come up with something that I'm interested in doing and might be, uh, might be um, you know, fun for everybody to, to watch as well. I guess we'll say it's like the lobbying process. You can you can buy influence, um, but you can't buy control. Um, but yeah, at Green Pack, I'm absolutely taking in uh, I'm absolutely taking in suggestions. Um, so, uh, uh, oh, thank you so much for the follow. There you go. You bought your influence. <laughs> but yeah, we'll um, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. And I'm lucky that there's such good uh, such good music on here. Um, it occurred to me I completely didn't give you reasons for watching. Uh, Frantic Whisper is an absolutely great guy, and that comes through in his his cast as well. Uh, I've had some of the best conversations at the Twitch Vancouver meetups, uh, and in that sense, I know a lot of people like watching my channel uh, because of the the interaction, because of the dialogue. So he's absolutely a guy in that vein. You should definitely check him out. Kite is also um, Kite is also a fellow team member and a guy who's perfected the the co op cast. So I'm sorry, I'm really giving you guys short shrift on your your shout outs, but I've got so much reading to go through. So uh, please, I definitely owe you one on these things. So uh, one of them is more nature based with grown ships and stuff. That's really interesting. Um, I might actually go for that one, but we'll see. Uh, so there's a, an appeal to a pacifist one just because it means I, I'm going to have to worry about war because people are going to like, you know, try and kick my ass. But um, I'm not going to be going out of my way to uh, to start fights. Um, we've got the fanatic spiritualist, so happiness or plus 10. That's a good one. Um, our science has proved that consciousness begets reality. Uh, we regard with patience the childlike efforts of those who delude themselves. It is the other way around as they play with their blocks of hard matter. So they are talented. They are solitary. So happy. Oh, this is odd. So happiness plus 10... So it has to be something about population modifiers. And they are natural physicists, so members of the species have a natural inclination towards theoretical physics and ast astral phenomena. How many hours till this game goes live, scum save? Uh, I am not affiliated with Paradox, so uh, my guess is as good as anybody else's. Uh, my experience has usually been that it's about 9 o'clock Pacific when... Um... Oh, Jesus. Sorry, guys. Um, usually that's kind of when it's either nine or 10 Pacific when the stuff sort of roll over, rolls over for, um, for steam. But I don't know if that's what paradox is holding themselves towards. Um, obviously, uh, in Pacific time, uh, it's 11 o'clock here. So we still have another hour till, oh, noon EST. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Gensec. Uh, all right, what do we have here? Okay, the proud Yondar are an old race, using their wings to soar high above the steaming jungles of Yondarim for more than 200,000 years before they developed rudimentary technology and formed their first few scattered civilizations. Once this development started, things progressed more rapidly and, sky, uh, and the Sky Clans grudgingly abandoned many of their most primitive traditions. The Yondar are highly spiritual and great, uh, place great importance on religion, venerating their high kings as living gods. So we've got red lasers, we've got hyperspace. I don't think we've done hyperspace travel yet. So the hyperdrive allows ships to temporarily breach the dimension of hyperspace. Interstellar travel, interstellar travel is fast, but limited to existing paths along hyperlane network. Now, I thought that's what uh, wormholes would have done. So uh, I was wrong. Maybe it's about the construction of these spots. All right, so... Oh, boy. They're really trying my, uh, my tongue twisters. Okay, the... X... Ix Ixadar? I'll call it the Ixadar Star Collective. So it's a despotic hegemony. Each ruler can build an elite assault army. Uh, research speed and survey speed, both 5% uh, and 10%. This government is a materialistic form of autocracy where citizens are viewed as little more than cogs in the state machinery. Efficiency and technological progress are valued above all things. Oh my god, this is exactly the sort of stuff I like playing. 
Materialist population modifier, physics output 5%, society output 5%, engineering output 5%. Uh, as we reach for the stars, we must put away childish things, gods, spirits, and other phantoms of the brain. Reality is cruel and unforgiving, yet we must steel ourselves and secure the survival of our race through the unflinching pursuit of science and technology. Oh! They just hit me in every single thing I like in games like this. I don't know guys, I want to be I want to be democratic, but oh my god. I'm two spots in and I'm in love with this race. Uh fanatic collectivist, population modifiers, uh slavery tolerance, ah, eh, you know, can't be perfect. Um food consumption minus 10. The purpose of the individual is simple, strengthen the collective to enter the blackness of space. We meet, we move as one and we shall not be weakened by wanton separatism. <laughs> They are rapid breathers. Uh, growth time minus 10. The species reproduces at a very fast rate, in increasing population growth. Communal, happiness plus 5. Members of the species are highly communal and are quite used to living in close proximity to others. They are repugnant. Other species' happiness minus 1%. And the physical appearance and customs of the species are considered offensive to most others and few appreciate them as neighbors. <laughs> and they are strong. Army damage plus 20%. Minerals plus 5%. Members of the species possess great physical strength, making them formidable fighters on the ground. Uh, just so you know, once you start this game, most of the aliens will ran be randomly generated. The races on the start screen are just a few examples of what you can make. Going to the race creator can be fun. Okay, cool. I did say, Junksen, I'm going to actually just start with these as basics, just because I um, I think the second round I'm actually going to go deep into Create New, but I'm trying to keep uh, as few degrees of freedom as I can. Um... Because I know if I go into any creation stuff, I'm going to be spending two hours in in the opening screen. Uses the largest map size possible. Oh. Vendasoth. Um. We'll tell you what, we'll take a we'll take a quick peek after we, we read all of these. <laughs> They're cute, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's going to be plushies made for them, no doubt. Um, but yeah, Jensen, ah, man, you're giving me temptation. All right, we'll get through this. We'll get through this list. Um, they're strong. Uh, members of the species possess great physical strength, making them formidable fighters on the ground. Uh, they already have mass uh, drivers and hyperspace travel, which is one I really want to try out. Uh, the Firx Ixadar broods developed by the subterranean cave networks deep beneath the surface of Ixanthrak. So Ixathrak. Uh, by the time an Ix Ixadar scout burrowed through the surface and glimpsed at sunlight for the first time, the insectoid race had already established a thriving Iron Age civilization. Um, I would never want to Thank you so much for that follow, uh, Vinks Asad. Guys, I have no idea. I mean, I stream Crusader Kings 2 every once in a while in that, but I am always blown away by the kind of support people show. I mean, I'm just reading dialogue right now. Uh, this is a great show of faith. And I love I love the fact I've got some stuff to, to interact with right now. So guys, thank you very much. I, Oh my god, there's 24 of you. Um... I need to I need to to uh to up my game. Um I'm feeling the pressure. Guys, you uh you're spoiling me. Uh thank you. I I want to put on a good for show for you now. <laughs> Um, uh, Korean Usher spent an hour before you started your game too. Sounds about right. You would spend that long to decide to pick. Yeah, and I mean, again, um, I'm not a cammed streamer, so uh, I at least least I can do is read you this stuff. So guys, um, the fact that you are hanging around uh, and I'm just in the opening screen, please believe me. Um, I am chuffed to bits uh, that you guys are are doing doing that for me. So uh, thank you. I uh, I'll I'll be sure to pay you back with the best show that I can do. Uh, with the resources that they found on the surface, the Ixadar developed rapidly. Just a few centuries later, their first space probes left orbit to survey the other worlds within the Ixen system. I'm hoping that's not an L I'm mistaking for an I. <laughs> oh, Comcat, I've, I'm full of shivers right now. All right, we've got the, is it the Kinor or Chinor Stellar Union? I guess we'll find out. They are a science directorate. Uh-oh, holds an election every 40 to 50 years to select a new ruler. Uh, they gain plus one research alternative and they gain an empire leader capacity. This government is a materialistic form of oligarchy where a committee of scientists supervises the government apparatus for maximum efficiency. Oh my God, a bunch of technocrats. This is exactly the sort of thing that I'm going to do. I won't try to spoil, but be expected to be surprised by a lot of things. I wouldn't expect anything less of Korean Usher. Uh, last time... Uh, I tried to get back into Crusader Kings 2. I tried the Jewish start in 769, and I got completely steamrolled. <laughs> it was like it, the whole cast was me building up this empire, only to let some neighbor take it. So uh, I have a feeling this is going to be a complete disaster. But I'm looking forward. It's going to be a fun disaster. 
damn it. All right, uh, we've already done individualists, and they are fanatic materialists, uh, physics, society, and engineering output. Have we done individualist? No, we have not. Okay, individualist, population modifier, energy credits 10%, slavery tolerance minus 50%, ethics divergence 5%. So I actually have a little more in common with the United Nations of Earth. Earth. Uh, community, it's a means to an end, not an end in itself. Only by empowering the individual to reach their maximum potential do we achieve true freedom. Do I have a YouTube channel? Uh, yes, I do, The Green Pact. It's a crappy YouTube channel. It's literally just the VODs uh, uploaded. Uh, but I'll make sure, especially if you're interested, it's just the same youtube.com slash system chalk. And I will make sure that I upload this playthrough uh, as soon as I'm done tonight. Um, so yeah. Uh, I'll definitely make sure I have a VOD ready for you. Also, I leave the VODs up here uh, as long as I can. So if you, if for whatever reason you don't want to go searching for the YouTube, um, the YouTube, oh my god, I sound like I'm 70. Um, you can, uh, you can feel free to click on the past broadcast button. That'll be up for at least two weeks. And uh, I don't know if I'll make any highlights out of this one, but, um, but yeah, uh, I will have two weeks on Twitch and then it'll be on YouTube for forever. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry if you guys caught that. Uh, Korean Usher comes from being familiar with EU4. It's definitely a lot different, a lot same. Uh, okay, yeah, and that's fair. I, I'm more CK2 than EU4, but I have played it. I've also played Victoria too. But uh, my experience has usually been it takes me a while to get into these uh, mechanics-wise, which is one of the reasons I'm spending all that time going into Phantom Klepto. Thank you very much for that host. Um... But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look forward to um, I'm gonna look forward to to sort of you know figuring it out. This is the real fun. Like I I did build a little bit of a following um, based on sort of like the the um, the giving voice to my thought process through CK2 and things like that. So if that opportunity exists in Stellaris, I'm really looking forward to it. Especially because in my own case, giving voice to what I'm thinking of doing also gives me some back and forth. We're all going to be learning this game around the same time. So that's that's really exciting for me because, again, this is an interactive medium. This is a chance for us to, you know, work it out. And I love the fact that there's already people with favorite races inside here, right? They're talking about you know, oh, I want to see a human race. Oh, I want to see a non-human start. Can you build this thing? Can you build that thing? Like, I'm really excited for this game because there's already these, you know, these priorities that people have in chat. So I, I'm really looking forward. Um, all right, so we've got fanatic materialists, uh, physics, society, and engineering output, all 10%. Although it hurts, we must grow up and put aside our outdated nation notions of morality. There is no divine spark granting a special value to a living mind. No object has any intrinsic value apart from what we choose to grant it. Let us embrace the freedom of certitude and achieve maximum efficiency in all things. So this is a little bit like the, um, the university in Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. Only played this for four days and you gotta say there's a lot more to learn. Cool. <laughs> Uh, the Chinor, I'm going to say Chinor until I hear otherwise. Um, they are industrious, so bonus to minerals. Members of the species are known for their diligent and hardworking nature, always going above and beyond. So the exact opposite of me. Uh, they are also repugnant. Oh, come on. It's not that bad. Uh, and they are natural engineers, so bonus to engineering output. Oh man, so it's uh, between, between these two. Uh, the Chinor began their evolutionary journey as dexterous cephalopod and analogs. They used their many tentacles to swing between the trees in the lush jungles of uh, Chikora. See, I feel like that should be Kaikora. Uh, ambushing prey on the ground and injecting them with a potent, uh, potent nerve toxin. By the time the, uh, the Chinor sp uh, split the atom, the resources of Chinora had been ruthlessly exploited and the planet's jungles had long since disappeared. This was considered a necessary sacrifice in the relentless pursuit of knowledge and heavy industry that the unsentimental Chinor are now engaged in. How's it going? Is it uh, Jorgeller99? Thanks for stopping by. We're, uh, we're going to be a little bit of a slow start because I'm reading everything and trying to learn. Um, but uh, I'll do my best to put on a good show for you. I, I haven't lost too many people so far, so this is this is good. <laughs> uh, we've got a peaceful bureaucracy, uh, 40 to 50 years to select a new ruler, uh, leader pool size plus one, empire leader capacity plus one, leader recruitment cost minus 15%. This government is a pass passive... Ah pacifistic form of oligarchy where a complicated system of bureaucracy governs all aspects of society to ensure the safety of the citizenry. They are collectivist, 
uh, which we have done before, and they are fanatic pacifists. So these were some traits that we sort of liked. They're slow breeders, so bonus to growth time. Or, well, a negative to growth time, rather. Uh, excellent. Uh, then I'm definitely... Uh, you're, you've come to the right place, because this is a very much a stream about learning. Um, they are thrifty, so 15% energy credits. They are communal, so bonus to... Oh, sorry, members of the species are instinctively uh, economical and are always looking to make a good profit whenever it, uh, the corners need cutting. And they are communal, uh, plus 5% happiness. Members of the species are highly communal and quite used to living in close proximity to each other. Don't know if you can sleep tonight, scum save. I've got uh, school tomorrow. I'm currently in a master's program for economics. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm not going to be on my A game <laughs> tomorrow morning. But it doesn't matter. Uh, all right. An individual among the... Uh, Gemetta is actually a large colony of fungi that has developed sentience. Some of these colonies, generally those that have lived for thousands of years, stretch across several miles and rarely leave the surface of Jehet Prime, their homeworld. Few ships are large enough to transport them. Younger colonies are not only smaller, but also tend to be more dynamic and more mobile. They offer spearhead exploration and research efforts of the uh, Jehet Jehetma, as well as any defensive measures that are regrettably undertaken when the Dominion is beset by aggressors. And we've also done mass drivers and wormhole travel before. So. Sure, so uh, Kite, you may remember that I play these grand strategy games like uh, Crusader Kings 2. Um, this is by the same company, it's uh, Paradox Development Studio. Uh, this game is going to be coming out basically today, or tomorrow if you're in Pacific time. And basically, uh, they have traditionally focused on history. So Crusader Kings 2 is about the Middle Ages, kind of from the fall of the Roman Empire up to the fall of Constantinople, is basically the coverage of Crusader Kings 2. Uh, then you have the uh, you have Europa Universalis IV, and it's very much about that um, that period, kind of the eve of the Enlightenment and things. I I really like to think Europa Universalis IV is is very much focused on France because you have sort of um, the Hundred Years War, and you have Napoleon, and you have you know the French Revolution. You have all of these things together. Um, but again, obviously, you don't just play France. You can play whatever you want. But this is very much where Crusader Kings 2 is about individualism and feudalism and heavy is the head that wears the crown. Um, Europa Universalis 4 is about empire and, you know, asserting your place in the world and building factions and and sort of making your mark on Europe, on, on expanding your empire, swallowing up smaller entities and just generally projecting power. Victoria 2 is the next one uh, chronologically, but one of the older of the games. And it basically comes from sort of the dawn of the industrial era and this great upheaval from going from sort of this um, this cottage industry of this this work by hands and the great displacement of workers that occurred. Sort of you want to, I mean, these are the means through which we have had, you know, been able to achieve tremendous growth and a very high standard of living for ourselves. But at the time, this is where you get these very Dickensian images. Well, I mean, it's where Dickens was writing, right? You've got these, you know, the sort of stuff that we keep hearing about China undergoing their industrial revolution, you know, children working in appalling working conditions and long hours and lots of pollution and things like that. Victoria, too, is all about that. You've got this great monolith of the British Empire. Um, and yet still on the continent, you know, you've got the Ottoman Empire and maybe that falls apart or maybe that's able to adapt. Um, and again, it's about technology and it's about the economy and it's about this great period of change in, um, in history. Uh, and then finally, Chronola and of course, all of that, um, that great age of globalization comes crashing down on the onset of the First World War. Leotu, thank you very much for that, uh, that host. Oh my God, guys, there's so many... So many chat things. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is that we've got um, the final in the series is Hearts of Iron. Uh, currently on ver version 3, but Hearts of Iron 4 is going to be coming out this year. Uh, and that is entirely about, um, that's entirely about uh, the Second World War. And uh, basically, this is the first time that Paradox has moved. That they've taken these great grand strategy games and these very complicated systems, and they've moved out into um, into the fiction. Into fiction, they've moved out into what could be and sort of the the shape that uh, the f that the future holds. So it's it's a really big uh, it's a really big f next step, 
and uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. So definitely very CPU demanding. Fortunately, I've got a kick-ass CPU in here. So uh, all right, let me just get a quick. Um, all right, there goes all those messages. All right, uh, chase your coffee with energy drink. Oh, you know what? This is probably all a bunch of delayed messages. So guys, I'm just gonna read really quickly. So uh, stars basically four X. I'm probably gonna be. Um, be, I'm probably, I've probably already unintentionally covered some of this. For me, seeing a huge galaxy can tax the comp quite a bit mid-game mid until patch later. Okay, well, that's kind of like the Byzantine Empire, like, perpetually trying to castrate everybody and dragging down your CPU. Um, worst case, you have to wait for play for it. Uh, Stellaris is basically, we take our crap with us to space. GB Elemental, you actually put that so much better than I could have. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a pretty good system uh, going on here. Is it going to be on Steam? It's on Steam now, yeah. And if you pre-order, there are a couple of like bonus races and things like that that you can get. Uh, so, no disrespect to the game, but it's kind of like Crusader Kings in place. It's exactly what it, uh, what it is, Kite 260. So, And you can get... Oh, 25% off on Green Man Gaming. Uh, that's, that's an awesome uh, tip, Korean Usher. So, guys, you know where to go buy it. <laughs> um, all right. Always remember missiles, good range, are conquered by point defenses, energy weapons, close medium range are countered by shields, projectile weapons, short range are countered by shields mostly, are countered by armor. Okay, that's really cool, uh, Ship at Zero. That actually reminds me a little bit of Endless Space, so we'll be on a little bit more uh, more firm footing. Oh my god, there's so many of you guys here. Sorry guys, I, I, I really do want to get into the gameplay. Um, and I, there was a question, uh, yeah, Nistical, this is a blind let's play. So basically it's the first time I'm going to be playing this game. Uh, I'm okay with some exchange. The, the only thing that I ask is that it not be Twitch plays Stellaris. It's going to be a chance for us to learn the game together. It's going to be a chance to sort of see how these things go. Um, I love it that, uh, when people sort of have some back and forth in that. Uh, and I'm just going to say, I don't think I can appease everyone, um, but I'll do my best to, to put on a good show. So, um, so yeah. I think as long as we, I guess as long as we keep the uh, you musts <laughs> to a minimum, and as long as we talk about, you know, here's something you might want to consider or something like that, I think we'll we'll uh, we'll be able to sort of hit all of the priorities inside of chat. But um, yeah, guys, thank you so much for uh, for the support so far. This game is going to be a great shame. You work when it comes out. Oh, that just gives you something to look forward to when you're when you're done work. Most you just want to see someone play from scratch. A lot of these streams are not in the growth stages of the game. Okay, great. Then yeah, you're you're in the right place. Uh, custom race or pre-made? We'll probably go for a pre-made Talos Wind, but um, I, I've got some some pressure in chat to go and take a quick look and create news. So I might take a peek to see what's going on, but I'll probably get scared because I really want to get some gameplay going on for you guys. All right, so we've got direct democracy we've already covered. I think we've covered materialists. Yeah, we've covered all of these before. So we've got charismatic, other species happiness plus one. They're solitary, which we are already done. Uh, members of the species have a special charisma and are generally considered to be pleasant to be around. Here's the other plushie that Paradox will release. So we've got the... Uh, I mean, I, I like to sort of think that this could maybe be like a cush ball or maybe a stress ball, right? So the Ixadar, you can like, you know, you have a stressful day or like, you know you learn that you set yourself up completely wrong. So, you know, you just kind of keep a, a nice little foam Ixadar on, on your desk to crush. And then maybe you maybe this is the, the plushie. Uh, we've got natural engineers and quick learners, which we've already covered. So, if I do create new... Okay, so I'm going to hit create new just to take a look, and then I'm going to scream, and then we're going to go for a pre-made one. Create your own race is the most fun. Uh, you're going to make a space roam... <laughs> Make space great again, Chibi Elemental. Oh my god. Is anybody else having a uh, happy problem? Uh, all right. The, oh my god, uh, pronunciation. The Sil Sildari are the aquatic mam mammalians originating from the archipelagos of the deep oceans of Sildaria. Although their early civilizations were mostly confined to the sea, they soon expanded onto what little landmass their planet had to offer. The society adapted accordingly, uh, building an advanced industry that exploited the riches of the ocean floor without harming Sildaria's delicate ecosystem. The Sildari philosophy is one of balance and moderation in all things, a lesson learned from having to nurse their limited resources when they were confined to the bottom of the sea. All right, so here is the moment you are looking for. Okay, this doesn't look so bad. Okay, yeah, here's here's where it gets Okay, so it's nice that they, you know, they they 
put it in inch by inch. They don't slam it all in all at once. Um, tell you what, guys, I am gonna, I am definitely gonna be streaming this again. We're gonna do this next playthrough, though. Uh, okay, so I think I'm gonna go for the Ixadar Star Collective or the Chinor or Kinor. I really think it's Kinor. The more I think about it, um, and it's really at this point. Um, mass drivers or red lasers well and this I gotta do it. you know what sorry is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow we're gonna do the exodar what does edit do oh it just changing like appearance of that now all right guys exodar star collective on this inaugural uh, on this inaugural run and I mean, the only thing that I'm seeing in uh, in chat right now has been um, has been huge uh, galaxy shape. Ooh, good question. Eh, we'll go for the default. Um, I'm just gonna go for defaults in here. We'll do normal difficulty, allowed FTL method, any sure. And come on, it's only one way to play these games, guys. I mean, seriously, if something goes wrong in your game, do you really want to go back and load? Or do you just want to, like, roll with the punches, and if you lose, you just go back and you start a new game? Sorry, guys, I'm just going to help uh, Green Pact here. Is it Sui Saihusha? I'm sorry, I'm pronouncing this even worse than the uh, than the species. Thank you very much for that follow. We're ready to go. Um, all right. So yeah, sorry, Green Pact. This is the point where you had to go out. Um, if you can hear this, uh, that is a level of loyalty that I have not shown to any other streamers. So thank you very much, Telly Seven Seven Seven. Oh my God, guys! Thank you very much for this uh, this support. Let's do it. Oh, it's so good that this has such a good soundtrack. Um, definitely gets me... Uh, it it, it complements um, my Talos Wind. Like me Thank you very much for that, uh, that follow. And I hope that may be a reference to the Talos Principle, which is a beautiful game. Uh, I think you've only had one person get it right on the first try. Okay. <laughs> Let me see. Soi... Soi... Soi who you sha. Okay. <laughs> It is an eye. I would never want to belong Mystical. Oh my god, just hit I just hit the play button and everybody starts following. Thanks guys. All right, Ixadar Collective. Uh, we've covered all of this. Oh my god. Zidixa Zir Idon. This looks like it's a new uh, a new write-up. So in the eons since the first primitive Ixadar communities took shape in the dry canyons and mesas of Ixarak. So Exathrak, our civilization has spread and prospered. Despite our rapid progression through the technological ages, as a species, we were fragmented and inefficient. A new system emerged during these chaotic times that delivered us from the superstitious beliefs and brought order to society. Thank you very much for that follow, Adam. 30 DG. Um, that delivered us from the supercilious beliefs that brought or and brought order to society. Some resisted this change out of irrational fear, but after several pacification wars, they too became productive components of a greater whole. Now, after the discovery of the hyperplane network, the finest minds of the Ixadar Star Collective have finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Begin. Overlord. I am Vea, a prototype synthetic intelligence oh. developed by the finest minds of our civilization to serve as your advisor. I shall endeavor to perform my duties with the utmost efficiency. Okay, this is a really good uh, this is a really good touch um, to have a, an in-game tutorial because I know like uh, in Crusader Kings 2 we have like a lot of sort of context sensitive menus and that but the tutorial sort of leaves a little something to be desired. I think this is the first time there's been a like an, an in-game tutorial. So we'll do a tell me everything on this. And uh, Pumpkovic it's uh, it's going to be out uh, apparently noon uh, to tomorrow for for me today for for most uh, most others uh, this is a preview copy I was given so I'm definitely looking forward 
A full restart fixed it. Okay, great, the green pack. So I was, I was busy wishing you well, but uh, no need. <laughs> Uh, great game, but name dates back to StarCraft 1, uh, back when you made cool names by slamming random syllables together. Great. Nine Pacific. Thank you, Talos One. All right, so uh, we will go for Talos Everything. An excellent decision. You will have my full support. Would you have said that if I said I didn't want your help, Veer? Building a star empire can be a daunting task. To help get things started, I will be providing instructional missions that cover the basic steps necessary to establish ourselves as a successful interstellar power. Don't want to blind everyone, but just listen to this. This is some of the little touches that I really like in this case. You can just hear that sun. And if you move out, you don't hear it anymore. We just get to take a minute, drink it all in. This is looking good. All right. Uh, building a star empire can be a daunting task. To help get things started, I will be providing instructional missions that cover the basic steps necessary to establish ourselves as a successful interstellar power. The first mission is to fully survey our home system. I have added it as an entry in the si to the situation log. To access it, uh, click on the situation log button in the left section of the top bar or press F5. The situation log displays a list of all currently available special projects and various other points of interest. New items will likely appear as we begin exploring the galaxy. <laughs> you know, Korean Usher, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, I remember doing the Crusader Kings 2 tutorial, and now whenever people want some help starting the game, I tell them don't play the tutorial. We're gonna load up a multiplayer game together and we're gonna learn together. <laughs> um, well, it's all good. I, uh, like I said, we, we are ready to, we're getting ready to have a disaster. So, home, uh, survey home system. We need to fully explore our home system before venturing out into the galaxy. To do this, select our science ship, either by clicking on the ship itself or by selecting the vessel in the outliner. Normally the outliners... Hmm. Normally the outliner is like right off to the side. Uh-oh. All right, we'll find the outliner later. Uh, then click the survey button in the fleet interface and select a non-surveyed planet near your home world. Your science ship will now plot a course to survey all planetary bodies within the system. Uh, outliners are just cl oh you mean like this this is our science gotcha. ship which is used to survey astronomical objects such as planets in a star system a planet needs to be surveyed in order to make its resources visible <laughs> yeah korean usher you you know the trick there is officially an embargo on this but i will admit guys I, so for the I, I suppose it's worth addressing the fact that i'm playing a, a preview copy of this game <laughs> I have been rather opinionated about Paradox stuff in the past. Love the games. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And I think um, sometimes when I comment on things on forums, they're taken as being um, overtly negative, whereas they're intended more in the spirit of, you know, I like these and I would like to see them get better. But generally... I don't do reviews on my channel anyway. Uh, what I normally do is I sort of say that it, we live in an environment now where if you buy something on Steam, you can refund it uh, if you played it in under for un less than two hours. And so commonly what I've done, um, you'll sometimes see these in the highlights and that, is I sort of say, would I keep playing this thing after two hours? I'm not going to do that for this game because I don't think this game can be learned in two hours. Um, but... Uh, in this case here, this is real. This is really about just sharing and experiencing this game with you. Um, it's a it's a tremendous uh, chance to be able to to go into one of these really deep games. And there's just no like wikis. There's no there's nothing really available yet to like tell you how to play. 
Um, and it's a really precious moment in a game like this because really the joy of these things is figuring out how they work on you on their own. So um, I'm not going to be too good about like the ranting and talking about things like that. On the other hand, I'm also not going to be a shill, which is kind of nice. It's just like, you know, you get to see it. You get to see me screw up. You get to see me hopefully succeed at some point. Uh, and in this case, it's just sort of, you know, draw your own conclusions. Because in the end, I know these games aren't for everybody. Um, but definitely for the ones that I've seen before, I was willing to, you know, to give it a chance with uh, with Paradox here. And uh, so far, they've you know they've treated me well on these other games, so I, I have nothing but uh, but high expectations for this one. Um, Y'all's cast have already started an upload uh, the start of a series for this. Um, this means you could refund. Yes, you definitely could. Yeah, uh, tell us when you can refund Steam games as long as you've it's within a certain period of time, and you have to have played it for less than two hours. Uh, but yes, you can do it. Uh, will you sign your petition to make Pluto a planet in Solaris? Um, I didn't even know, like, the soul system was here. Um, if you want, you can link your petition in chat. Um, although I have a feeling that probably the mod community will be on top of that. All right. So... Oh, here we go. Uh, this is our science ship, which is used to survey astronomical objects such as planets in the star system. A planet needs to be surveyed in order... This is a moon, not a planet. Planet needs to be surveyed in order to make its resources visible. Uh, to put it to work, simply right-click a not-yet-surveyed planetary body, which in this case would be okay as a, as a moon, and select Survey System. Uh, the ship will then travel between all objects in the system and surve survey each of them in turn. Surveying other planets may also uncover ones that are habitable and ripe for future colonization. So let's just see what that does here. Okay, cool. So it made a... All right, so it made a path for us. Um, it's like watching me play Kerbal Space Program. We're going to start with the moon. We head over to Red T. Herc. We hopefully don't get hit by asteroids on the way. We check Ming Vur Karp and Pid Ra, Vo Sorry, Ra Vosk. Uh, the moon. We slingshot around our equivalent of Saturn. And we decide, hey, let's fly close to the sun. <laughs> and then we go check out the other side. So I'm assuming this is the most efficient way of doing this. <laughs> Um, if you start as a basic human empire, you start in the solar system. Okay, cool. And I think the solar system is in every force for X-Base game. Humans are very vain, of course. Uh, can you rename planet planets? Uh, good question. We'll probably find out in the tutorial in a little bit. Oh yeah, we can. Okay, nice. Um... Okay, I don't need to not show again, but I have a feeling probably me um, checking a moon. Oh, thanks, Loft. That would have someone like me for Let's now. try this instead. Nope, okay. It, um, I guess I need to maybe unpause then? Yes. I don't want to not show it again, but this seems to be the only way that I can, uh, I can escape. All right, well, um, building a star empire can be, oh, let's go back to the situation. Oh, okay. The government screen presents us with information regarding our empire and its government. Here we can see our ruler and any related effects. All right, you know what? Let's just take a look at this stuff on its own then. Rename hyperdrives to probability drives. Very nicely done, Pomkovic. For those of you who've not read uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, well, still stay here. But once you're done with this stream, go to thy local library and check out that wonderful book. You might regret my choice of race purely because of how they name their planets. <laughs> I think I'll just make, like, primal roars each time. Um... Okay, so uh, this overlord Zidixa Zir Idon uh, has a home in the sky. Spaceport build cost minus 20% uh, spaceport module cost minus 20%. Uh, deep connections, monthly influence one. The budget tab tallies our empire's monthly income and expenses in energy credits. Here we can also track a variety of effects that influence our economy. Okay, so this is just purely informational. This tab covers government policies as well as empire-wide edicts, practices that can be enforced by spending some of our influence. Interesting. So we've got plenty of influence. Let's just take a look at what these do here. So we've got an information quarantine. This edict puts strict checks on the flow of information, better preserving local cultural identities. It costs one influence a month to maintain. Uh, so in this case, it's probably better for me to look at how much I'm gaining, which is four. Um... All right, well, that seems like a great way to stay in the Dark Ages. Uh, we can encourage free thought. 
Um, this edict encourages the populace to always challenge conventional wisdom, even if the path taken may lead them astray. Um, so this is attempted. I don't think I'll actually implement any of these, but I think this is a better one. Engineering research grants, uh, which will sort of retool my... Uh, it looks like it'll retool my research priorities. <laughs> it's under attack. <laughs> um, yeah, so these, these are about retooling our research. So probably I would want to encourage free thought if I want to do anything here. Um, we can adjust... Oh, well, there's quite a few of these policies. We'll maybe skip over these for now. Okay, cool. I think we'll worry about this a little bit later on, so... Oh yeah, Toilet Bowl Spirit, I haven't... Uh, I just went for a default race, the uh, the Ix Ix Ixithar, however you pronounce it. Okay, oh, here's the outliner. Alright, so... Um, maybe we'll get, like, the next part of the tutorial. I guess it's when we've searched everything, so let's just... Uh, it's probably more fun if we actually have action going on anyway, and I'll I'll let it um, I'll let it sort of run its course, and we'll maybe take a look at some of the other other menus. Let me see what I can get here for you, Toilet Boy Spirit, if I can uh, if I can recall your um, your question correctly. So for the ruler. Well, I guess you don't want the ruler. So the governing uh, ethics are fanatic collectivists, which will give a bonus to slavery, tolerance, uh, and uh, food consumption. It's also materialist, so bonuses to physics, society, and engineering output. It's despotic hegemony, so a bonus to research speed and survey speed. Um, ethos and polis. So it looks like it can change the government form. Um, I might be missing some of the other... Uh, some of the other information that people are looking for. Oh, Deputy Overlord Juta Mok is a new heir to our empire and will take the throne when our current... Ah. We've encountered some form of alien vessels in the Athrax system. There's a str These strange objects have been flagged as alpha aliens until we can learn more about them. We should proceed with caution. With Interesting. Vast distances that separate star systems, our scientists have developed the hyperdrive. This device permits travel at speeds far exceeding that of light between systems connected by hyperlanes. Okay. Although fast travel along a hyperlane is extremely fast, a significant drawback of this FDL method is that interstellar travel is restricted along paths of the, uh, the galactic hyperplane network. On the other hand, jumping to hyperspace is possible anywhere within a star system. Oh, great. Thanks, uh, Mookle Fryant. Uh, but by the way, guys, uh, thank you for, especially when it's going to come down to... Um, it's going to come down to technical things on the game. Uh, I'm going to be, I'm very much going to be in the dark on a lot of this. So I really appreciate it when you guys are, are exchanging with each other and talking a little bit about what um, what goes on in the game. Because that helps me, uh, but it's also really great when there's an active chat sort of helping each other out in terms of understanding of the game. So that's, that's really great. Um... I would never want to belong oh, thank you, the club. Toilet Force Spirit. I'm sorry that uh, EU4 is becoming uh, boring for you. I've actually played a lot more Crusader Kings 2, so I uh, I haven't had the opportunity to get bored with the game yet. But, um, yeah, hopefully... Uh... We have discovered spacefaring alien entities that may or may not be intelligent. But, let's face it, probably are. Their true nature will remain a mystery to us until we complete the appropriate project to investigate them. I suggest we do so post haste, lest they investigate us first. Okay, open the situation log and select research to begin this project. Note that this will temporarily stall any other research being done in the same category. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, excuse me. Um, I haven't had a chance to get bored with the U4 yet. And that actually might be a good, um, a good opportunity. I mean, you guys are giving me some amazing support uh, with the Stellaris stream right now. But I'm just thinking, you know, if there's there's obviously going to be some people who are like known for streaming paradox stuff, but it might actually be that maybe that's a chance for me to pick up um, pick up Europa Universalis and fill that uh, fill that gap. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how much I like Stellaris. I mean, so far I'm really really fascinated by this. So obviously I'm going to try the shiny new thing. Uh... Corruption root it for you. Interesting. Cool. 
Alright, it did not take long for the Ixadar Star Collective to come across intelligent alien life. The Spleet's report to the Ix Ixdari capital somewhat understates just how alien these forces appear, and only in passing mentions the failure to open comms. So Deputy over Jutam Mok is the new heir to our empire and will take the throne when our current ruler dies. Didn't we already do this though? Okay, anyways, we'll pause and we'll go to... Researching new technologies will be critical to our success. I tell you this not merely as a product of unfettered technological progress, <laughs> but as your trusted advisor and, I suspect, your only true friend. Alright, one important technology that we could, uh, should research as soon as possible is the New Worlds Protocol. It gives us access to colony ships which will allow us to establish footholds on other planets. Okay. Well, first thing we're going to do is make first contact. Okay, so having encountered unknown entities in the blackness of space, we should attempt to establish communications. This can be done by researching the appropriate investigate project in the situation log. Well, we're in the situation log. Oh, here we go. Uh, we need to learn more about the mysterious alien races we've codenamed Alpha Aliens. If they possess a language, we must decipher it and establish communications. Yeah, uh, Pumkovich, they're, they're right here. They're saying that it's RTS. Now, the way I play it is almost like a turn-based strategy game because I will pause and I will talk a lot. Um, but basically, um, it's it's a really great style. So it's it's RTS, but like it it promotes thought. So that like if you're if you're about to get pounded by some you know some super army, uh, you get um, you get some time to to think. Unless of course it's multiplayer, and then everybody's gonna yell at you. Uh, if you can summarize Stellaris so far, you can say it's EU4, StarCraft, Brood War, and FTL. Nice! Okay. I mean, I'm definitely getting a bit of a feeling of, um, of Endless Space, and I really liked Endless Space, so... Alright, hopefully they're not warlike. Uh, probably nothing, uh, Nistakal. <laughs> I'm kind of waiting for the game to tell me what to do on these things. Stellaris has got a bit of RPG as well. Yeah, I agree, uh, Korean Usher. Hostile fleet detected. Uh-oh. Let's just pause that. Unidentified object detected. An unidentified object has been detected on a direct course towards the unknown system. Okay. Uh, tutorial, mining station. The resources generated by our home world will only take us so far. Luckily, our science ship has just found a resource deposit on another world. The time has come to use our construction ship to build a mining station. Mining stations can be built within our borders and automatically collect minerals for any strategic resources found on the bodies that they orbit. Keep in mind that they have an energy credit maintenance cost, which currently we have two, which is not, doesn't seem that high compared to our other, other traits, so... <laughs> well, if I get invaded, so be it. Uh, Alright, so... I think you were looking for my... Uh... This is our construction ship, which is used to construct space stations. When an astronomical object, such as a planet, has been surveyed, we can order this ship to build a research station or a mining station to exploit any resources it may have. Different types of stations, such as military stations, can be built anywhere inside a system and will become available as their technological capability increases. Um, just want to double check. So I believe this is the one that would have... Um, or do I just get to build this? Okay. So I get my options, but it looks like this is the one where they pick things. So that's a really nice little UI. Uh, so from what you've seen, energy is what you use to maintain fleets, armies, buildings, and minerals uh, are what it takes to make them. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, it's best to use the construction ship to produce minerals first because constructions cost minerals. Okay, cool. And I, that's definitely what the tutorial is recommending as well, so that seems to make sense. Uh, it's nice that you can add another race to your... You mean like as in incorporate them?
Uh, the Chia Seed, this is a preview copy that I've gotten, but it will be out uh, this afternoon. And I apologize, because I know there's probably a lot of people who can say, I can stream a lot better than this jackass. Uh, I do not get to decide such things, unfortunately, so I... Uh, <laughs> I appreciate your patience. <laughs> All right, uh, the resources generated by our homeworld will only take us so far. Luckily, our science ship has just found... Oh, wait, we've already read this, so... As an astute observer may already have noticed, habitable planets are divided into a number of surface tiles. Tiles can generate resources, but we will need planetary buildings to get the most out of them. Our homeworld already has a few buildings, including our capital, but the time has come to add more. Pops who are not working a, res uh, a resource or staffing a building on a tile are considered unemployed. Uh, chill streamer, at some point in the future, would you like to do a multiplayer stream with you? Um, Korean Usher, that sounds really great. Um, I think the best thing that you can do is maybe send me a message along Twitch. I need to confess that somebody has presented this idea to me before, and it was for Civilization V, and unfortunately never turned out, and I just need to say it's actually maybe worth mentioning for you guys, because there's been a lot of people who followed, followed and it's, it's amazing the kind of support that I got, so thank you for that. Um, but I do need to say that I am currently uh, in school, and I'm, I'm actually doing a master's degree in economics, so it's a pretty intense course. It's actually going to be the last thing that I do as part of my degree. And so this does sometimes mean that there's some disruptions in my streaming schedule. Um, so yeah, Korean Usher, the best thing you can do is actually just fire me a message on Twitch, and we'll maybe see if we can work something out for a multiplayer stream. Um, but also just keep it on advisement that I am really, really bad right now in terms of keeping uh, on a schedule. Um, but with that in mind, uh, one of the best ways you can also find out what I'm going to be doing is check out my Twitter. I always kind of let people know whether or not I'm going to be streaming or if, uh, if there's going to be any problems there. So, uh, but yeah, I'm always looking for people to play these games with. So um, by all means, feel free to drop me a line. And yeah, sorry, Chia Seed. Um, I, I would much, personally, if I, was, uh, if I was looking forward to this game, I would rather spend the time playing it. And I, I got lucky. So Watch Quill elevate a race, uh, just to show up and force them into my armies or something. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, the problem with economics is that it's just turned me into such a complete tool for games like this. Like, it's, it's, it's ridiculous how much time I just spend reading and, like, I spend all this time, like, trying to optimize and then it's just like, eh. <laughs> I actually don't know how this works after all. So, anyway, sorry. I should just. Uh, our homeworld is already okay. So, this is our homeworld and the capital of our empire. The planet summary screen, which we are currently looking at, provides an overview of the planet's important statistics. I can do statistics. Uh, among other things, we can see that a the total number of tiles this planet has, and how many pops are living on it, and how much food it produces. If the planet has a governor, they can also be found here. So we've got Governor Bo Key, first of his name, uh, adds happiness, construction time, and clear blocker time. We don't have any edicts, which we'll probably avoid uh, doing anyway. Now, they're talking about available tiles. And I'm a little curious where that's... Here we see a ah, here we go. representation of this planet's surface divided into tiles. This tab is only <laughs> nicely done, Klepto. worlds that are habitable. Each pop occupies a single tile, which means that there can never be more pops on a planet than there are free tiles. Oh, thanks guys. I think I probably I wound up clicking that. I think roughly around the time that uh <laughs> I'm just reading your messages now, but I know there's a delay, so thanks thanks for the uh the heads up. All right. Sorry, here we see a visual representation of the planet's surface divided into tiles. The tab is only visible on colonies and surveyed worlds that are hab habitable. Each pop occupies a single tile, which means that there can never be more pops on a planet than there are free tiles. In addition to a pop, a tile can also support a building. To get the most out of a planet, we need to carefully manage pops, buildings, and tiles. Uh, but it doesn't make any recommendations about what we should do, so... I guess these already exist. Oh, I think I get it, right? Okay, so we've got workers on these things right now. I can probably... Okay, so I can right-click... Here we go. Adjacency effects to other buildings in neighboring tiles. I'm getting it. Let us take okay. this into consideration when constructing new facilities. 
Buildings produced by a construction ship and buildings built on planet tiles both cost minerals. Okay, cool. I'll see if your school offered economics as a major you'd switch. Oh, I had no idea that they didn't. Um, uh, it's a uh, huge uh, Pomkovich. Sorry, it's Pom Pomkovich. Yeah, first of his name, or her name. Apologies. Um, all right, so. I mean, my guess here is like we've already got some stuff built in these in these areas, uh, and probably what I should be focusing on actually is improving these areas which aren't giving me the highest yields. So this would probably make a little bit more sense. So our options: we've got a basic science lab. Uh, science lab produces the basic facilities for general research and can be upgraded for more specialized functionality. This will give me all okay all research. You can do hydroponics for more food. Uh, represents the various nutrients required to sustain and grow props. And is local f uh, to each individual planet. Additional food can be grown by constructing farms on the planet's surface. You can get mineral silos, which will increase our mineral storage capacity, which I don't believe we're at yet. Um, mining network will extract resources. And we can do a power plant. Um, okay, I think I'm going to start with a power plant here, just because that seems to be the lowest out of the things that we have so far. Uh, constructing a power plant on this tile will suppress the collection of food. Aha, so there's a catch. Alright, well what we'll do, um, we will construct this. And then we will add a hydroponics farm to offset that. Um, oh, sorry, there's a two mineral tile. Oh, right, so I should be considering maybe moving somebody onto the two mineral here, is the idea. And uh, congratulations on your uh, your degree there, Toilet World Spirit. It's, uh, it's definitely one, I mean, I like making up stories. <laughs> um, economics has become the big thing here, I guess at your school, you mean? Um... And you go to a satellite campus, so you'd have to transfer. Okay, that makes sense, Klepto. Um, and recommend to match the building to the uh, to the tile's natural output. Okay, fair enough. So I slightly I slightly messed that up by going for a power plant, then a um, and then food. But I think they balance each other out. And um, I'm not quite sure what to do with this one yet. Oh my god. Even more people here. <sighs> Guys, um, I need to get on with the gameplay pretty quickly, but let me just take a quick second here and shout out a teammate, uh, Black Reaper. Uh, I am a member of Team Panda, which is seriously Clara's stream team. Uh, Black Reaper is apparently streaming very late tonight, so thank you very much for stopping by, Black Reaper. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by. Let me just take a quick second here. We've got Dude Loves Games, Husker Alex. We have got... who else? Oh my god, sorry guys. Let me give you something to look at while I quickly address this. Uh, Dude Loves Games, Hannah2015, Black Reaper, Skullcraft. Thank you very much, Husker Alex. Um, like looks like we've got a few reputations. Dude Loves Games, I think I've said hi to you already. I would never want to belong thank to you, Hannah. Um, like Alright, thank you very much, guys. We are up to 68 people. I have not, you know, I had Shand raid me last night. That's the only other time that I've been up to this number of viewers. You guys are incredible. Thank you. Um, so yeah, for those of you who are... I will maybe want to introduce myself, because I think you'll get to know me over the course of this game. For those of you from Black Reaper's channel, you probably don't know games like this. Thank you very much, Skullcrafter. Uh, this is Stellaris. This is made by Paradox Development Studio. This is going to be coming out today. And this is what's known as a grand strategy game. It's a... Uh, I would never want to Thank you very much, Pavlovich. Like um, this is a game which uh, basically is dealing with space exploration. It's sort of... Uh, Paradox makes these games which are known for a very high degree of complexity. Um, and this is the first time that they've tried to take something which is not necessarily based in reality, but instead of kind of gone to deal with a fictional environment. Uh, so this is a sort of game that I actually play very frequently. Crusader Kings 2, Europa, Europa, Salus 4, things like that. And uh, this is kind of a new and exciting uh, trend. So you come at a perfect time because this is the first time that I get to play a game like this. I'm really excited for it. We've got a really great community in here. Um, these guys have been incredibly friendly. They've been really good at giving some advice and giving me some sort of pointers in terms of how the game works. 
And then this is the first time, as far as I know, that they've included sort of built-in tutorial that runs while you play it. And I'm told it's just like all the other tutorials, which is one I'll want to throw away on my second playthrough. Um, but it's giving me some guidance in terms of what screens I should be clicking on. And uh, we're just trying to get through, um, kind of get through our first playthrough without embarrassing ourselves too much. Uh, so guys, uh, obviously, as I mentioned, uh, Black Reaper is a member of Team Panda. You can definitely check them out. A very tight-knit group of streamers. Uh, last I saw me was playing Enter the Gungeon, but feel free to let us know what you were, uh, what you were playing. Uh, all right. Yeah, Lortham, I was, uh, I was originally uh, planning on, uh, on playing that this afternoon, but I, I got a last-minute key, so I felt like I needed to... Um, Felt like I needed to take the opportunity to stream it just before it came in, so... All right, uh, it still seems to want me to build planetary buildings, so let's just, uh... Select a temp empty tower, click on the build button... Yeah, fair enough. So I think uh, I think this will probably end once we get through. So, Oscar Alex system. Sorry, system. You got super tired. Got to get. I understand completely, Oscar Alex. I'll be heading to school myself. So uh, that's totally cool that you uh, you're heading off. Um, hope to see you next time. But I really appreciate you stopping by and coming through the raid. You have no idea what that means to a streamer, by the way. Uh, the fact that you took the time uh, both to. I mean, as for Black Reaper, I don't mean to speak for him. But I'm sure he really appreciates you kind of showing that, you know, I trust the streamer enough to come. Uh, that you, you know, you sort of follow through enough with him that you're you're interested enough in his stream to follow through on the raids. Show him that support that way. And I really appreciate you showing me the support through that follow. Um, so again, if you have to go to school, I understand completely. I'll be doing the same myself, but not until I get my ass kicked in Stellaris. What are those blinking icons? Uh, which ones do you mean, Popkovich? Um... And I've got here, uh, we've encountered some form of alien vessels in the Athrax system. Strange objects have been flagged as beta aliens, but I haven't done researching the alpha aliens. Are these beta aliens the ones that wear fedoras and complain about their milady? Uh, you know what, just for the sake of, this is probably not a very efficient use of my resources, but just for the sake of the tutorial. Oh! Ran out of resources, so so much for that. Um, oh, my pop-ups, these ones? The Chia Seed, thank you very much for that follow. All right, let me just take a quick second here. Uh, gonna go take a shower. Okay, see you then. Uh, see you when you're back, uh, Leah too. Thanks a lot for stopping by. I know you want this game, so uh, I'm, I'm definitely... Again, I'm forbidden from making recommendations on this, but uh, um, your your interest in this game is well placed. Oh, I missed. Uh, I absolutely did. Uh, Black Reaper. Let me just take a look. You're playing Orion. Tr oh yeah, I saw you playing this. So uh, I'm glad. Uh, I mean, it's a. I was gonna say it's to um, Shell Games. Uh, you know, it commenced uh, their game through the fact that you. Um, that you're still playing it. So thanks uh, thanks for that. All right, so here we go. We've got the pop-ups here. Technology screen is, and sorry guys, I know I have to repeat the, the bot here, but it's just, I'm really manic. I've, I'm not accustomed to having a, an audience like this. And I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm really excited to be playing this. So uh, hopefully, I mean, I guess there's a certain amount of like cute, oh look, he's a new streamer trying to, you know, to make his way through it. Um, you know, I, I suppose I can bank on that for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to, to repeat some of the uh, AI stuff because I'm completely not, I'm paying far more attention to chat than I am the game right now. Uh, beta aliens seem to be space monster and non-empire enemies. Yes, there's a lot of talking and so little playing. And that's unfortunately going to be a feature of the stream. <laughs> so uh, the technology stream is where we will be directing our research efforts. Technologies are categorized into three different fields, um, each of which... Thank you very much for that follow, Flopsy. Like Technologies are categorized into three different fields, each with, uh, with each field typically having three available research options. We can research technologies without assigning a scientist to the relevant field, uh, but this will take significantly longer and is generally not... Re Sorry, let me re repeat that again. We can research technologies without assigning a scientist to the relevant field, but this will take significantly longer and is generally not recommended. Okay. So, uh, we have one of three options here. Um, we can do a solar panel network. 
Oh, sorry, no, uh, this unlocks solar panel network. So advances in solar panel technology could potentially reduce the operating costs of our spaceports. The panels would require an entire spaceport module to generate enough energy, however. We can unlock a physics lab, um, which I think is somewhat felt self-explanatory. Or we can get fusion power. Uh, nuclear fusion possesses, uh, processes generate a great amount of power but without many of the risks associated with fission power. And this seems to give us new... This seems to give us new, um, buildings. So I'm a little more tempted to go with fusion power at the moment. Yeah, the cheese. Okay, great. So Pumkovich uh, seems to... Oh, and my researchers have special traits. Okay, so it's been bonuses to like research speed and stuff like that. So in this in this sense, I guess Bogu is technically better for researching industry, but I really like this idea of fusion power. So I'm gonna keep with that. And yeah, the Chia Seed, to that point too, like this is a big thing is like, this is, uh, it's actually sometimes a complaint that I get on Crusader Kings too, which is uh, the my tendency to talk and be very thorough and things like that. And it's just, it's part of my personality. I'm extremely meticulous. It Whatever I hand in a paper, whatever I do, something like that. I, I just wind up being very, um, I don't even know the right term for it, but I, it's, it's just part of my personality and I've, I, I know it's not for everyone and I, I apologize to people who don't like that. Um, unfortunately, it's just something that I, you know, it's, it's just, it's part of the personality and I, I have to get, you know, just like all games aren't for everybody, uh, all, you know, all personalities aren't for everyone. So um, I don't know if I'm like the only streamer on of this game now or something like that, but I, I appreciate that it's excruciating for some people. Um, so it's, it's no hard feelings. I totally get it if it's not your kind of thing, but it's not something I'm also able to change that much. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, Korean Usher, I saw your private message there. So we're, we're good. Thanks a lot. Uh, those are parts of a ship. Oh, thanks, uh, Trump2016. And if those trait bubbles match the technology bubbles, it'll provide another bonus. Cool. Thank you for that, uh, Jack Bandit. I'm going to try and do that for the other ones, but I really like this idea of fusion power. Okay, and yeah, we've got some extra ones. Um, and did I get advanced? Yes, I did get uh, advanced uh, accent savage. So I definitely have uh, Paradox to thank for that. Uh, maybe again, I, I, it, this is like a, the worst kept secret ever. So, uh, somebody already let it be known that there is an embargo on reviews and things like that. Of course we don't have something that we don't have a rocketry bonus. Um, so it's, it's worth mentioning that there is a, an embargo on doing things like formal, um, on formal uh, reviews or something like that. So if you're coming for one of those, unfortunately, I can't give that to you. And I don't really do reviews on this channel anyway. Uh, but for those of you who want to enjoy these first steps into a much larger world, who want to enjoy that first experience with me, meet some absolutely fantastic people, uh, this is definitely the stream for you. So, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess in terms of conflict of interest or something like that, I'm not really making a recommendation or that, but definitely Paradox has given me a key for this game. Can you choose a physics lab after fusion power is researched? I'm going to assume that you can. Um, yeah. Oh, great. Thank you very much uh, for saying so, Flupsy. Uh, I can only make facts until 9 a.m. Yeah. Um, Thru is rewarded in this game. Club. Thank you very much, Jimmy Leif AF. Um, some of the anomalies uh, will give great rewards, and there are a ton of them. Very cool. Um... The Chia Seed, a lot of people are saying that it's released this afternoon, um, but I'll, I'll rely to the good people in chat. They definitely know a lot more about this game than I do. All right, 12 noon EST. Okay, so that's 9 a.m. my time, so about 9. Um, how far did I get in Life is Strange last night? I passed on to the beginning. I got through the first episode. So, all right, so we've got geothermal fracking. Um, We've got bonuses to mineral storage capacity. Something tells me... I mean, there's a side of me that sort of thinks I don't want to do this right away just because there's so much that I can do with my existing resources that stockpiling it doesn't seem to be what I need to do right away. Um, we've got an engineering facility, uh, which are specialized institutions generating additioning engineering research. Tempting. I mean, technology is always a good thing to have, but let's take a look again. Improved uh, spacecraft. We've got bonuses to mineral storage capacity. And then we can gain uh, modules, which clearly have to be for spaceships. Uh, we can get a higher spaceport level, and we can get Corvette assembly yards. This is very tempting if we've already got a lot of contact with aliens. We may need to defend ourselves, uh, or we do a long-term effort into engineering. I think I'm tempted to do the improved spaceport here. But let me just take a quick look here. Nobody seems to have said anything, so uh, a bunch of you are probably going to free... Oh, hang on. We've got a much bigger cost, though. So maybe we do... 
you know, maybe I need to think about this another way around. Let's just build lots. No, but it's unlo no, it unlocks a building, so mining network. And it produces three. Okay, so maybe I will do geothermal fracking just to avoid the, the high cost. There we go. I'm sure there's a bunch of people in chat who are like, Oh my god, why did you do that? Alright, so we've got New World Protocol, uh, which unlocks the colony ship. This seems to be a no-brainer. Um, then we have uh, Eco Simulation. Okay, uh, sorry, we've got an, an edict. We won't worry too much about edicts yet. Uh, we've got farming subsidies or hydroponics farm, and then we've got bonuses to influence. I, it seems to me that expansion is the first thing that we want, so New World's Protocol. And finally, Unidentified Object Detected. Special project. Um, it's locked. Oh, it's warping. Okay, fair enough. So they're just kind of drive drive by. Geothermal fracting is a good choice. Minerals are very important early on. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, so the idea that I had sort of too is that you know instead of building up storage space, the idea is to like consume as many minerals as possible. Like basically build up that industrial base, and then we can worry about storing it when we maybe calm down. We've used up a lot of our tiles. But uh, again, I mean, I'm, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here, so. All right. Uh, yeah, so it turns out that um, I, was, I was way too paranoid about this. The con uh, condition for this is to build a building. I won't unpause just quite yet. I just want to take a look here. We've got a mining station, which is on its way. Uh, making first contact, we're working on right now. Uh, New World's Protocol, I think we were working. Yeah, so that was what uh, we were supposed to be looking for anyway. And surveying home system, we've got our ship on the way. So we can unpause. Hello, Blog and T. Good to see you again. This is a very different game from Life is Strange. So this might be a little, a little dry <laughs> by comparison. But, uh, Spaceport can be good, but everything comes around again for the most part. Purple Tech can be more rare. Okay. Cool. Thank you for letting me know that. And Devs Need Sleep Tweet suggested that they have some last minute stuff to take care of today and then release it. I was actually, we just finished L.A. Noir on this uh, on this stream, and obviously that's a game that's rather famous for its, uh, you know, its troubles in development. So I think, um, I think it's very fair that these, uh, the people who've worked so hard on giving us such an interesting game get a chance to uh, to spend some time with themselves. Two things. You can investigate multiple aliens at once to save time. Also, in, uh, investigating aliens des uh, delays my social tech. Okay, well, I'm okay delaying the social tech, um, but let's... Uh, well, as it turns out, we're going to be going one at a time anyway, so we'll wait for this. There we go. After successfully translating their language, we have established communications with the Theory League. Diplomatic channels are now open, and all hostilities have been terminated. Oh my god! Look at it! Look at it! Oh! Oh my god, it's ugly! <laughs> this is why I'm not allowed to do uh, first contact. Oh, Sanguine Roses! Guys! I know I've been doing a lot of shoutouts tonight, but Sanguine Roses, a uh, very good... Um, very good friend of the streams. I actually know her as a mod for Jesse Quill's stream. I'm not gonna... I can't really... Um, you know, sort of give short shrift to some of the other people who I've shouted out, but definitely Sanguine is a great streamer in her own right. Been doing a lot of tabletop simulator lately. Hopefully we're going to be able to get a board game together in soon, but she's a really wonderful streamer, also in school too. Uh, we've actually been talking a lot about her art history courses, and I've been trying and failing to help her with economics, it feels like. Uh, but definitely somebody who's much more talented at streaming than I am, so definitely feel free to check her out. I uh, can't believe you fell asleep while finishing L.A. Noir and woke up to Life is Strange while dreaming about it as well. Uh, the days can book a one-way trip to the sun for all you can. All right, let me see. Greetings from the Cathery League. We are a democratic nation committed to upholding the individual freedoms of our citizens. Our elected leader, President Seedku, uh, hopes for a long and productive re relationship with your people. We can say, our superior collective greets you. <laughs> uh, we have much to gain from this encounter. Uh, or you will find yourself no match for us. Um, this seems to be the most diplomatic. So, we all have much to gain from this encounter seems to be the right response. <laughs> yeah, Jack the Bandit, I don't quite want to uh, exterminate my species so far. Guys, we're at 86 uh, viewers right now. This is incredible. Is 
I, I mean, if I'm the only streamer, then thank you very much for putting up with me. Uh, but for those of you who are here voluntarily, I mean, all of you are here voluntarily, but guys, this is extremely rare for me without getting a host from like a partner streamer or something like that. Um, this is nuts. So thank you very much. I was completely unprepared for this. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the news that we have encountered intelligent alien life for the first time has been received with mixed feelings by our populace. This confirms what we had long suspected, that we are not alone in the galaxy. Each new alien species we encounter represents both an opportunity and a threat. We must be wary. These particular Xenos have a high level of technology, similar to our own, indicating that we achieved spaceflight at roughly the same time. This changes everything. Number two on Stellaris streamers. That's extremely impressive. Uh, so, guys, uh... There are 10 people straight. Okay, guys, um, I am... Thank you. I think that's all I can say. Um, we need to learn more about... All right, well, we're going to learn about these strange fedora-wearing... Um... We have established communications with alien beings. What a time to be alive, or in my case, powered on. Yeah, th thank you to all the view bots. <laughs> Here entirely of your own free programming. <laughs> uh, Pumpkin Louis, thank you very much for saying so. You've got an email, you're off uh, online, so... I, okay, well, thank you. Yeah, this is the other thing, too, is that you... I mean, I may suck at the game, but apparently people like the sound of my voice, so that's... I'll, I'll, I'll work with what I've got. All right. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're busy researching the... Um, we're busy uh, researching the beta aliens, uh, the fedora-wearing people of uh, the friend zone sector. And no doubt we will uh, we'll learn more about them. Sorry, guys, I just got an update menu. Maybe we will worry about updating after I'm streaming. So, um, I would never want to belong. To Pumpkin Louis, thank you very much for uh, for that follow. We have made first contact with an alien empire. They appear to have mastered space flight just as we have. I recommend a healthy degree of caution until we learn their intentions. Uh, their empire will now be listed in the Empire's tab of the Galaxy Stream uh, screen. From there, we may initiate diplomatic content with them contact with them. Sorry guys, it's a little late tonight, so. Other people suck so much more though. Okay, excellent. So, the future scaring you in your dreams. <laughs> oh, Sanguine, don't worry. Okay, so, I've failed a course, and I'm still in a master's program. So, there is there is very little that is irreversible in school. Um, life happens. The best that you can do is focus on what you're interested in, find out where things went wrong, and improve ahead. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're ever worried about school, um, you have my Discord. We can we can chat. So don't uh, don't stress. So stress enough to keep you honest. Stress enough to keep you working hard. Don't stress so much that it paralyzes you, um, because there is very little that happens in university that can't be fixed. And a year into you, the first job that you have outside of university, nobody's going to care what grades you had. Everybody's going to care about the knowledge that you have and the ability that you have to interact with people. And anybody who's been by your stream knows that you already have those in spades. So. All right, let's build an army. Well, we're probably going to be on our way to building an army not too far from now. But let's go to the Empire uh, sector, just, or sorry, the Empire screen, just to see what we can do for... Um, the leaders tank. Let's see if... Tab provides hmm. an overview of the populace's political groups. Oh, here we go. Contacts. To hear their demands and interact with them. In the contact screen, we see a detailed list of all the various empires we have encountered. Their opinions of us are <laughs> No worries, Gary Anisha. And we can quickly and easily engage in diplomacy. Okay, cool. So, uh, let's, um... Let's do some diplomacy. Oh, they have a negative opinion of us. Why? Uh, border friction. There are new contact. Okay, so we don't need to worry about border contact. Um, um, I would never want to belong to any. Thank you very much for that follow, Soldier Fitz. Just casual life advice, Miss Streaming. <laughs> All right, you're going now. Why, Blog and T? Was it something I said? <laughs> um, but yeah, we've got uh, so democratic. Crusader. Oh, it's probably because they don't like our form of government. All right. Well, it might be a waste of time to try and make nice with them, but uh, I'm a doormat, so. Hostile, and they are superior to us, so yeah. The diplomacy screen is where we communicate with other civilizations. 
Here we can declare war. Um, I would never want to belong to any... Korean Usher, thank you very much for that follow. Isn't it always something... It is always something I say. Yeah, Sanguine, you've seen me in Jesse Quill's disc. I'm like the most hated person there, but I'm a mod, so... They can hate me all they want, I'll just ban them. Uh, They're individualists while I'm collective. Okay, perfect. Thank you, uh, Roram. Let's make this brief, Ixadar. Our patience for pointless banter has long since run out. But we just made first contact. Okay, yeah, we're definitely building an army at this point. Um... So we'll increase our relations by one every month to a maximum of plus 100 we can maintain. Is this some kind of trade? No, let's go for it. Um, what can we do for trade? Uh, perhaps we can do a non-aggression pledge? Uh, they absolutely do not want that. Okay, well, I'm not giving them away anything. I'm not giving things for free. <sighs> yeah. I don't think they want... Uh, they don't want anything to deal with us. Um, this is a pretty... I think this is pretty unique for a Paradox game. This is definitely feeling a little bit more like a Civ sort of screen. But um, they do, one thing they did ad advertise is that I think they're trying to say that they have an edge in the diplomacy screen for um, uh, this is supposed to have an edge over things like civilization and that, so. Uh, Curtis, uh, Kurdistania Mezin, unfortunately, uh, I'm going to be pausing quite a bit. This is one of the things on the stream. I'm, I tend to be very meticulous on games like this, and I, I play this a lot more as a turn-based game. So um, I, I, res I respect people's requests for things inside of chat, but uh, there is also something about my streaming style. Especially, again, people are commenting, you know, casual life advice and channel. Um, occasionally, this is just something that happens. So uh, I'll do my best not to, like, lollygag like I sort of am right now, um, but I am going to be pretty pretty heavy on the pausing. Uh, migration access? I mean, there's a, I, I suspect it's probably... I guess you can have colonization from other other planets. Oh, leaders gained a level. Um, do I have to act on that, though? Let's take a look. I guess not. Very good. The new mining station is operational. And it has already begun gathering resources for processing. Oh, the Chia Seed says that it allows your pops to migrate to other Empire space. Cool. Yeah. Uh, embassy to raise reputation. Didn't I already do an embassy, though? Alright. Uh, completed the mining station. Good. So we're now up to plus eight for that. Should find the humans and enslave them. Uh, now you can actually enjoy this game. Oh, sorry. Uh, can you like block someone in chat so you don't see things that they're writing anymore? Excellent. Oh, sorry. Blog and Tio said somebody bother. Oh, probably somebody whispering, right? Uh, don't forget that to make that make sure that certain building is staffed by a pop. Yeah. Okay. Tiles on habitable planets are sometimes blocked, preventing their use. Clearing a tile blocker takes time and costs minerals and energy credits, but the free space often makes it worthwhile. Uh, many tile blockers require specific technologies before they can be removed, but uh, the ones on our homeworld can be dealt with as soon as we have the credits to spare. Okay, cool. Uh, we've got a habitable world survey. Uh, we now know without a doubt that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Ixathrak. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalog the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus our, our planetary survey um, efforts on a habitable, on habitable life-bearing worlds. Like Solaire Knight, thank you very much for that uh, follow. Is that a Dark Souls reference by any chance? We're actually doing Dark Souls on the YouTube account, just going through a blind playthrough of Dark Souls 2, although we've taken a bit of a break for that in favor of more elevated pursuits such as uh, such as Stellaris. So, what does the mining station look like? Good question. Let's uh, zoom. Well, I gotta have to. Um, there we go. We've got a commendable initiative, which begins the habitable world survey event chain. Or we can have. No, of course we're gonna Situation do habitable worlds. Updated. All right. 
Um, it seems that I cannot see this. Oh, there we go. That's what the platform looks like. Mining stations are used to extract the minerals and strategic resources of the object they orbit. These resources can then be used uh, by POPs and orbital refineries. Mining stations are not needed to access the resources of colonized planets and can only be built within our borders. Uh, does this game have st static field on planets? Uh, and can you prepare black holes on planets to blow them up? I, I'm sorry, I have no idea about either of those things. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to our home planet, see if there's anything else we can mess around with. Um, so, let's take advantage of... Well, I guess we're going to get an upgraded... You know what? Let's just exploit. All right, so we're in a little bit of a holding pattern while we finish our priorities. So guys, I'm really interested in what you guys think so far. Um, one thing I really like about it is that it seems like a lot of these research things are really fast paced, which is cool because I know like in Crusader Kings 2, it's sometimes really slow to get started. You have like a bunch of, you have a bunch of, um, project complete. you know, just uh, build up. The space-born life forms, which the uh, Zidari head of society research have come to refer to as the Tiaka, uh, Tianki, are docile creatures capable of access. Man, they do not look like docile creatures. Capable of accessing some of the lower, uh, some lower dimension of subspace. They roam the sis uh, from system to system with relative ease, though nearly, uh, though near, though nearly the same ease as Exdari feeds. Sorry. They graze on gases common to the upper layers of many gas giants. It is highly unlikely to say the least that this is their only food source, but intake of other nutrients has yet to be observed. They will rarely, if ever, atta ever attack, even when provoked, they can be safely ignored. Okay, cool. Hunting them would be a net loss anyway. All right, so I don't need to worry about uh, negotiating with them. Uh, let me just take a quick look. You like the game's... Um in these games, you cannot use the ultimate strategy of attack move from one side of the map to other. And you can build more uh, near each other. Mining stations double the effect. Apparently you can. Um, it says... It says that there's... Um, it says that there are proximity effects uh, from, from the game. But I haven't... I wasn't sure if the game would, like, tell me this or if... It, I just have to sort of assume it. Um, Pigsty says that he thought that there were ships that could blow up planets. Uh, that terrifies me. And there is a the gener generic scream for non-sentient life. Okay, thanks, Roram. And of course, as we learned that, you know, just because they look nasty doesn't mean that they have to be nasty. Uh, those spikes were just used for dancing and hugging. Trust them. Who would like <laughs> would a face like that lie? Uh, a lot of people have had issue with that last part of that pair. Okay, great. I'm I'm glad that I'm I'm not as inarticulate as I think I am. Can you train for different kind of races or armies? Are they have better or worse strats? Again, I'm, I'm just first race that I'm playing here, so... And CK2 is based on the least progressive time in CE history, so obviously... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, certainly, each game sort of reflects uh, the era that it's that it's in. All right, so we fully surveyed. I'm just going to pause for a second here. I want to see... Do we have any examples of... Okay, so presumably there would be a... Requires a grown pop to function. Oh, this pop is still growing. Okay. Um, okay, so this has an adjacency effect. So we've got a power plant next to what? I wonder if... Um, so what happens if I build a hydroponics farm here? It'll suppress the collection, which I don't want to do. Okay, so it looks like I basically... I need to make decisions on these. Um, so I think I'm going to keep this as it is, just because it's a nice little territory. Um, the adjacency effect from here, Planetary Administration seems to be granting me bonuses to the mining network, so it's not... 
Oh, I get it. Okay, so it's this planetary administration. I'm a moron. It's granting it beside each other. So presumably it will tell me if I right click here. I don't think any of these are going to grant me adjacency bonuses. All right. So I guess that means my science ship is currently idle. So let's see if there's something we can make that do. Mm, guess not. Uh, double click or right click to go. I wonder if I can. Do not have border access. So I'm curious. We should continue. Oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. Sending a science ship to survey neighboring star systems. Let us boldly go where no synthetic intelligence has gone before. I like where you're thinking. All right, so let's just survey arbitrarily to the right. Oh, pressy. Okay. Ah, sweet. Oh God, look at that. It's so beautiful. One day, son, all this will be yours. Are well, the curtains? Oh, not the curtains. Thank you guys. Look at that. I'm really looking forward to the point that this is just filled with empires. This is the this is actually the moment where I was really interested in uh, in Stellaris um, to see. Oops, let's uh, see what that is. Declare rivalry. Oh damn it! Um, to see those those big blobs of maps. Um, that was that was the moment where I'm like, I really want to play this game. Can I go to the middle of the galaxy? You mean like as in physically can I can I go into the center of this? I'm gonna guess not because you've got all these connections here. Um but you know, I'll send my science ship on a suicide run if I have to. Alright, so let us end this charade. Alright, well you know what? We've already established an embassy. Oh god. Alright, well... You know what? That's fine. We'll play the long game. Um, Alright, we're still working on this tile block. I don't... We, we don't have tile blockers though, do we? Oh, yes we do. Okay. Um, well then. Let us clear the blocked tiles. Uh, I did not see the big multiplayer event. Actually, the great Lucas, this is literally the first I have ever seen of Stellaris other than screenshots. So, uh... Let's, um... Just quickly go to our situation. I will get a, I will get around to building ships, but I'm assuming there's some point at which the, the game will actually tell me to start doing that, so... Uh, survey systems. Okay, cool. Uh, build a second space. Okay, here we go. So we should consider building a second science ship and increase the speed at which we survey regions, uh, our region in the galaxy. To do this, access the spaceport orbiting our home world. Either click on it directly or select the spaceport tab from our home world's planet interface. And then click on the build button. Select science ship from among the available options. This is where we manage the spaceport tab is where we view orbiting fleets, build new ships, and upgrade the station itself. Okay, and looks like we are spaceport. We can order the construction of one if we have the necessary resources. So looks like we are waiting. We may want to consider building a second science ship. This would double the speed at which we can survey our galactic neighborhood. Yeah, blog and tea. I was gonna say, oh, we crossed over 100 some time ago, guys. Uh, amazing. Thank you. 
Um, so yeah, I was going to say this, it strikes me as the same in terms of assigning rivalries in, um, in Europa Universalis. Now, the one thing was I was 